My name is Captain Mike Benson uh, here in Charleston, South Carolina. I work for the Charleston Angler. Um, we're going to show you how to tie the copperhead crab. This little guy right here um, is a fly we use in the tailing grass for redfish. Um, I designed this fly about eight years ago. It's become a staple here. Uh, a lot of guys fish it, including myself. Um, so we're going to show you how to make it today. Um, start the fly with the hook. Um, I like to use SC15 one on. Um, I've used a lot of hooks over the years to tie this uh, B10S number twos and um, some TMCs, but this one uh, about perfect. It's got the right hook shank length. It's sturdy enough that I don't bend them out, and it's super sharp. So SC15 one off from Gamakatsu. Um, and the first thing we're going to add is going to be the lead eyes. I like small, unpainted lead eyes um, for this particular fly. We're just using Danville 100 Day Near. Um, fly Master is good in the root beer. Um, for the thread, so we're going to get this started. Just want to want to put the eyes. Um, I'm trying to leave as much shank here as I can to build my body, but I don't want to crowd the eye, so I need to leave room for a weed guard. So I set them back about a sixteenth of an inch or so from the eye of the hook leaving me just enough room to work a weed guard in there um, and leaving me as much hook shank as I can get um, try to keep them straight get them as tight as you can I don't want this thing moving on me All right. so then we're going to move our thread back to the end of our shank right where it starts to turn and we're going to add in some flash I use copper flashaboo, um, pretty standard issue stuff. You can use root beer, you can use pretty much any color you want I guess, but um, this is the copperhead crab for a reason, so we use a lot of copper. Um, I just need a few strands, and I like to, to pull off um, my strands twice as long as I actually need them to be, so I'm going to fold them back over so I get about 15, 20 strands. Like I said, about twice the length I need. I'm going to tie them in right in the middle. That. Just bring that back and tie right on top of it. Gives me a nice thick clump of craft of uh, flashaboo. I'm just going to pull it back about, I don't know, hook shank and a half back from the tying point. I'm just going to clip that like that. Alright, now we're going to splay hackles. I like um, a ginger barred hackle. You can use uh, a pumpkin, a root beer, a brown, um, but I like the barred effect. Um, these are essentially claws. Um, I don't know that they're necessary to to have on here, but um, you know it's kind of a traditional way to make claws on a crab. So we're just going to get four identical or close to identical feathers um, off this cape here. So I'm just kind of going through and picking some that have similar size tips. They don't have to be the same length, but I do want the tips to be similarly sized and shaped so they match up um, fairly well. So I found the four I want. I'm just going to line up, line them up in pairs. Um, you can see this hackle has a natural curve to it so that when I put those on, I want the curve facing away from the pattern. So I'm lining them up with that natural curve two on each side so I get each pair lined up like this I'm going to line those pairs up there put those down once I get them lined up I'm going to line this pair up like that then I'm going to take them and once I get the pairs kind of the lengths lined up where I want them I'm going to take these and I'm going to lay them opposing in pairs so one pair is bending away from the other pair and you can see how that works like that so once I get that lined up now I'm going to tie them in and this takes a little time to get right uh, most of the time you gotta really work at them to make sure that they get even um, the best way I found to do that is to leave them whole you see guys trimming them ahead of time to the length they want that's not very good when you're trying to line these up so what I do is I lay them in there the whole feather at a time, I pull them down to the length I want, and then I position them roughly where I want them to be. 
Um, now I'm going to make a few loose wraps and pull them down tight. Now those are not right, but because I left the length in there, now I can grab my pairs and tweak them and move them into the position I need them to be. And don't ever hesitate to roll this thing over and make sure it looks good from both angles. Um, Sounds. Tighten those down. Once I get them in place, I want to tighten them fairly snug on the hook here. And these don't have to be perfect. I mean, we're not doing an identical crab claw imitation here. We just kind of want something sticking out the back, imitating that. And I trim this close. And I like to just go ahead and take my thread and cover up these. This is doing two things. One, it's building me a thread body that I want under that fly. And two, it's just kind of cleaning up all those little trimmings and securing those hackles in place. I'm making a few wraps here to get my thread where I want to start. And I want to start my thread right at the base of those those hackles. And then I'm going to look at it from the top and I'm going to look at it from the bottom and it looks splayed out pretty well. So we're going to leave. So now we're going to start constructing the body. Uh, to make the main part of the body, what really makes the fly is um, this stuff right here. This is gold mylar cord. Um, it's just a hollow cord. Um, you can buy it at, at tackle shops, craft stores, things like that. It's got a little uh, string inside of it here. We're going to discard. Um, I like to go ahead when I'm doing these and um, cut the sections that I'm going to use ahead of time. So I'm going to use about one inch sections, so a section about that long. And to construct this body, I need five sections. I'm going to have four sets of rubber legs, five sections of body. So I'm going to go ahead, cut one. So, I'm trying to give them a pretty similar length, doesn't really matter in the overall scheme of things. Alright, so I got my sections, I'll just lay those down out of the way. Um, we're also going to use rubber legs um, on this crab pattern. The rubber legs we're using are um, made by Hairline. They're barred crazy legs uh, in the orange gold speckled. Um, they used to be called copperhead legs, which is originally where I got the name for this fly. Um, it's from the legs I was using on it. So to do the legs, I like to cut them ahead of time too. I'm using four sets or four legs. So I pull off two full length sections, double them over. And I'll just take my scissors and go right down the middle of them. Now I have four matching length legs. Trim the tops off so they're individualized. Um, and then just lay those out of the way. So we're going to start the first body section. First thing I'm going to do is remove the cord out, discard that. And then we're going to tie this in. It's just a figure eight system like you would tie in yarn or anything else. Just figure eight that in. It doesn't take very many wraps to secure this. You see guys get crazy with the wraps, but really one or two good figure eights and you're set. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and tie in my second body segment before I put my legs in. Um, and I like to start from behind the segment um, previous to the next segment. So my thread's actually going to come over both segments of, of the mylar and then go back over both segments on the first wrap. That keeps them tight together so that I get a nice compact body and it doesn't spread out. And then I'm going to go in between and figure eight maybe one wrap in between the two just to solidify and that's going to hold that in place. Now I'm going to take my rubber legs and I'm going to tie these in right in between the two body segments. Just one, kind of line it up and then come back with another wrap here. And kind of squeeze them around, line them up. And really that's it, one figure eight. These rubber legs bite down real tight, they don't go anywhere. So then I'm gonna do my next body segment. We're just gonna continue this all the way up. Once again, always coming in from behind and then figure eighting. I'm just gonna keep working. Maybe one wrap through the middle. Take our rubber legs. Let's 
Just keep working that line right on up through. frustrating when it unravels before you want it to. Okay. Once we get that done, we're just going to move to the eye of the hook, right between, um, just kind of keep everything pulled back out of the way. We're going to add our weed guard. I'm using 50 pound fluorocarbon um, for my weed guard. Doesn't have to be fluorocarbon. But the 50, fluorocarbon is just a little stiffer than mono most of the time. So I tend to use the fluorocarbon more often than hard mono for that reason. So we got our 50 pound fluoro. All I do is bend it in half uh, before I ever start tying it. And just take your fingers and really pinch that thing down hard. And it'll help get it nice and small on the tip. So when I tie this double weed guard in, I'm just going to put that little V I just created right around the shank of the hook couple wraps right over the top then I'm gonna go behind both wraps underneath the uh, if you can see here underneath the little nose and then back around I'm making a loop around that what that does is that pulls that weed guard into an upright position which is obviously where it needs to be in order to be an effective weed guard I'll then go around and in between figurating these guys to separate the weed guards from one another, once again helping to create a more effective weed guard. Once I get that set, just make a few wraps in front here to get it where I want. Grab your whip finisher and whoop, finish her off. Tighten it down, just clip your thread. Now, one trick that you can use, you can kind of spread that guy out and just make sure it's where I want it. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut this just a little longer than it needs to be to guard that hook shank. And that's a nice stiff weed guard. It keeps you as weedless as you can um, be. One little trick I like to do when I'm tying any crab pattern, because I don't want to cut my legs when I'm trying to shape my body, is actually use hackle pliers. Um, and we don't use these much in salt water, so they're usually just laying around on guys' desks that came in some kit. But a good set of hackle pliers, pull all your legs, make sure you got them all, pull them all down, and then clip your hackle pliers to them and let it dangle. Now my hackle, all my legs are bunched. I don't have to worry about clipping them when I'm shaping this thing. Um, the shape is not really too crucial here. Um, I generally just go just a little outside of the eyes and just kind of cut it in a quasi curved pattern. Doesn't really have to be anything specific. Try to keep it even. Um, And then this one's already unraveled, but you just pick at it a little bit with your hands and the body flares out and you get that nice bristly um, body there. And you can unclip your legs and just kind of use your fingers and work them back up into position um, into their respective gaps. To get them back down where they need to be. Now we got our legs out, and then we're going to use head cement. Now we're not just going to coat the head, we're going to coat everywhere there's thread. Um, and we're just using any kind of head cement you like. I like a thinner head cement. Um, this grips works well, hard as hole works really well. Um, but we want something that's going to soak into these threads. So we're going to take our bodkin, get this nice glob on here. Actually, just 
coat this all the way along the body here and just let it I mean don't don't get shy with it um, we want to make sure and get a nice coat of head cement on all the threads this adds to the life of the fly um, if we don't do this we can you know catch maybe one or two fish on this fly but by not coating all this stuff and getting a nice durable hard thread base um, we can catch multiple fish on the same fly without any real problems so and that's it man that's her